Hello again, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard. Remembering to set her timer. I'm so sorry, that took me an extra second. I'll just set that for 16 minutes. You can see the cream pitcher. It's stainless steel. It's usually easy to clean out if you catch it in time. <laughs> I didn't, but um, they're on the Amazon link. And so are the OXO omelette turning spatulas that I'm going to use in a minute. And uh, I just got myself some very sharp tweezers. And I am looking forward to being able to pluck out all of the indiscreet items that tend to wind up in my artwork from whatever's on the breeze, and those are perfect. I think they weren't any more than a few dollars at the most, and I'll be very happy to have them. So I'm going to do um, a variation on a ring pour, but um, it's going to be different for sure. I'm going to start with some black paint, just regular black paint. And I am not going to worry about any enamels for a minute. I'm going to grab some white paint. Am I? I thought I shook everything up and unclogged it. Well, I've got the ability to get some of that out of there. So I'm going to do the white in between. And I just got these bottles, these 8 ounce bottles with measurements on them. And um, there must have been a good quantity of them. I got like 10, 12 of them because I wanted to do some stuff with the blooming. And this is the Folk Art um, multi-surface acrylic neon. And I added the Sargent iridescent medium that I also have on there just to see how it was going to react. And so far I'm loving the color. And I have lots of other colors. And as long as there's white next to that neon, usually that means that I can get away with it. I am going to continue with the darker color in between colors, and this is my Prussian blue, which is usually Grumbacher. Ah, come out! Everything's up slightly, just ever so slightly plugged. It's a much warmer day than it's been for a while, which means I'm going to be getting my frozen objects from my cooler. I'm just trying to pick colors that I really like. I am going to put some of this um, gloss. I don't even know what brand it is, but it's a it's an, um, an enamel. And because it's an enamel, even just using the slightest amount of it and with all the rest of this paint seems to make a big difference. So I'm going to just keep adding colors I like and hoping for the best. And every once in a while, I'm going to put in a darker color. That is color shifting blue from folk art that I added unicorn spit to darken it up and I kind of want some gold or something in there but I think for right now I'm just going to settle for the colors I've got and whatever I've got left I might make a wild and crazy skate so where's that white even though it's a little plugged that's a little better so what comes out first is going to be showing last I guess but this may be different than that to be honest with you, because I have intentions of doing something entirely strange. And uh, I'm going to finish up with that. Am I? No. I'm going to finish up with this other purple. And I may actually finish up with that pink, like I said. I didn't use any of my regular mixed paints. So this is what's going to make this different is that I'm going to prime the canvas. A lot of times when I do ringy things, I don't do that. Run that right over there. I think maybe putting the glasses on my face would be a great way to start. Not that I have too much problem seeing the difference between black and white. But this OXO omelette turning spatula, take that paint out of the way, means that I can see all the things in here like that that need to go away. Got to use my tweezers right off. <laughs> Valuable little suckers. I've got others. Thank you, Vanessa, for my backup supply. Appreciate that. They're flat fronts, but they I guess they were a multi-pack of neon ones. I'm not sure where they came from. If she'd have told me, I would have tell you. But I'm pretty sure they can't be that hard to find. Vanessa's in Canada. Vanessa's a sweetheart. Hi, Vanessa. Vanessa was one of my students. I can't remember if we made a, vi a video with Vanessa or not. We've made a few with some students. 
I do teach classes at the house in Spring Hill. Hey, I wanted to mention to you guys who haven't heard it before, just in case you need to know, if you like what I do and you want to support my studio and you don't have a better way to do it, watching the videos longer is the only thing that the YouTube algorithm understands. I'm not going to worry about most of this, I don't think. Although it's a hot day out here, it, that kind of means it's a good thing to have a heavy layer of paint because that way it won't dry as quickly. Of course, it could get sticky pretty quick once it reaches the 80s, and it's pretty close, I can tell, to 80s if it's not already. It probably is. All right, I'm going to scrape that off. I'm going to wipe it off and leave it on standby. I always keep a studio rag handy. I, I definitely recommend if you're going to use spatulas, it's a nice thing to have them be clean when you go back to get them. So what I'm going to do, I wanted to start from the outside and go in, but I think I actually have to start from the inside and go out. And I want to put something in the center and try and, yeah, bleh, I got paint stuck to me. And hopefully that, because that's a lid, I can get that to come out easily. I'm going to make sure that that's in the center as best I can by checking all sides. It's not, <laughs> but it's close. If I just keep looking at it a few different ways, I'll probably get closer still. All right, so I wonder if I can just leave that mark in there, and that will guide me. So what I want to do is use my turntable. and overlap my paint. I don't know how this is going to go. It's definitely the first time I ever tried this. I keep hitting the bottom of the cream pitcher in the black paint, but I don't really think it matters since it's a pretty heavy layer anyway. Who knows what's going to happen when I get to the end of this. Of course, I've also got basting brushes and I can add more paint if I don't like what I've got, but I kind of do like what I've got, I mean. Got plenty, plenty of paint to spread out. Hopefully it uh, doesn't swallow everything that I like. And this is my first try at this exact method, so it should be very interesting. I'm just trying to drain. Whoops, there's a lot more in there than I thought there was. Just trying to get everything out. I, I have the inclination to like take something iridescent or take something gold and go in between the layers, but I think that's best left for another experiment. Oh, come on. <laughs> Finish up, would ya? I've got something I can plug that with. And then I've got Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatulas, which are great for reaming out the center of things. So I'm not going to panic. I'm not super thrilled with this area, but I think that it's going to be okay. And um, I was going to use a round canvas today. Just because. And I'm going to try and join the Slow Tipper Club, although I make no guarantees that that could be the way it happens. I'm going to try and notice which way the... I'm going to try and go the opposite way from the way I was just doing, because I think that'll pack my, my ring in better. Let's hope I'm right. I don't know if this is even possible, but I just have this idea in my head that it is. To create some sort of organic spiral from laying the colors over each other. And I think I'm going to recenter my paint and go back the other way now. And I think I see something in there. Nah, that's just me wanting to play with my tweezers. <laughs> I got great colors. We'll see what happens. I got some paint that's obviously a little heavier than other paint. I could definitely make it erect whatever it is, but it's it, it defies description right now as to what it actually is. I love the iridescent colors over here around the edge with that turquoise in it. I want to just go a few places in a non-circular mode and see what happens, but it's, it's hard to pick how many different experiments you want to include in one. 
And so far I'm just, I'm happy with the colors, but I'm not so thrilled with the pattern. That could mean that anything's possible at this point. So I'm just watching the flow of the paint. Wishing I had a little more dimension. If I shift all the weight to that side because I want it to come down in this corner, I might be able to do that. I'm going to put an edge catcher up here. I'm going to put a larger edge catcher than that edge catcher up here. And who knows where this experiment's going to go, to be honest with you. And I'm going to let some paint roll off, which is not something you usually see me do. But knowing that I can use my OXO omelet turning spatula to retrieve some stuff means if I really want to go ahead and save some negative space I can or if I want to take this paint which is beautiful on the edge catcher and put it back on somewhere else I can do that too I much prefer a diagonal stripe I'm not preferring much of anything about this yet, but I'm not done either. And it might be a good example of what you can do with paint and a spatula. Yeah, maybe not my best experiment, but like I said, we're not done yet either. Just going to touch my finger to the parts that might be construed as needing some coverage. Grab the black. Oh, now I got paint on me. I don't know, doing the bloom technique has just uh, opened up a world of possibilities of becoming more painty. <laughs> Maybe not my favorite aspect either. So, what would you add at this point? to make this more interesting and I kind of think the answer might be to put all of the paint that I've got back into the picture with some white in between if I can do that and I don't know that I can but I'll try and lay another layer over. I just watched um, Milo Villages do something similar the other day and I was like wow that's a lot of paint but then her result was really good have nice colors they're just not um, they're not as fabulous as I need them to be what can I say I'm gonna grab some of that paint right off my spatula put it back in the cup grab some more white grab some more of this purple I think I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my neon straight-up folk art multi-surface put all of that paint right back into that cup as best that I can because we don't give up easily around here <laughs> and I'm gonna put the gloss enamel right down into that and then because I can <laughs> the name of my first book on the Amazon link I'm gonna take any any other paint that's rescuable and continue to use it because I know there's some gorgeous blue color in there. This is just a great experiment that I want some more white into and maybe some more pink. And since I have that white in there, I'm going to use some more neon. because I've never done anything quite like this. And I'm gonna do it now. Just making really random patterns. And then I'm gonna tilt. I could also basting brush, which is just basically um, 
a regular silicone basting brush from like Walmart for a buck or whatever. And then you cut off a lot of bristles. I'm so not done with this color. And I am pretty sure by putting that enamel in there, we'll get some interesting cells. Yeah, it kind of looks a little like a mess right now, but um, I'm not done and I'm not giving up. And I've got 46 seconds, so I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna reset the timer and I got a few more minutes and that's it. To tell you, watch the videos longer and can I have a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind? I would really appreciate that. I want some white pearl and I wish I had some gold. I'm not sure gold is the right color for in here, but being that it's in my hand, why not? So that's kind of neat. And when that timer goes off, I'm going to be stuck with whatever I'm stuck with unless I want to do a part two. And it basically just looks like a huge mess to me. But it could change. All right, well, I'll let you guys know. I do sell my art. I do give classes at the house in Spring Hill. I can't say that I'm super duper thrilled with what I've just done. So probably you'll never see it or anyone unless it turns out to be something s spectacular in the next few seconds, which has happened. I kind of think orange would fix it, but I'm not sure of that right now. I know there's a lot of paint coming off there I'd like to use in something else and I might just put it back in the cup again and have a go. So, there we go. Pretty enough colors. Time for the basting brush. Just to see what that will do. And I, I actually do like it when you drag lines through things quite a bit. And that's actually kind of nice. I don't know how many I want to drag through there. But it seems like the more the merrier. And I am going to torch my artwork and call it a day. No, well, I'm not going to call it a day, but I'm going to call it better than I was expecting by far and away. And I actually like it. So thank you guys for joining me. And uh, if you want to help me out, aside from watching more of the videos, there's a thousand videos on my channel. If you go to my playlists, all, all playlists, you'll find creative playlists organized by genre and by the hundred. I torch to release the bubbles in the paint and also sometimes to create patterns and I'm not minding these patterns at all. It's really pretty. I might want a few more of them. I want to dip my basting brush in right over here and make that a more cohesive area before it gets any gloppier. Right down over the edge. I love you guys. There's 85,000 of you. 85,570 at the moment. And um, what else should I tell you? Uh, <laughs> I have an Amazon link. I already told you about the Amazon link. It's the first blue link when you click show more underneath the video. You can find Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter links there also. So as patterns go, this is pretty cool. Um, it might wind up being the background for something else. Oh, you got to check this out. Look at the beautiful patterns on my edge catcher. And that paint will not go to waste, I promise you. I'm trying to think what I'm supposed to tell you. There's a drawing every month. So if you want to be a contributor to the studio, it's a $10 minimum. And there are many paintings. And you can see what the, what the prizes are in any given month on the end screens of every or any video. This is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard saying, you're probably gone, and I love you anyway. <laughs> Bye for now. Priscilla out. Oh, you're still here. Wow, that's cool. Well, good. Maybe I can zoom in. I think I stopped. I think I started my, my uh, timer a minute early. So I love you guys. And uh, what did I forget? Anything? Ha! Huh. I forgot to wash my hands. <laughs> I'll see you guys in on. Bye for now. Priscilla out.